tell me just before we start, like, Trump did quite well in 2020, didn't he, with, mm-hmm. with gay, gay men and lesbians? I, I won't use the LGBTQ thing because okay. all sorts of reasons, but the gay men and lesbians did. And they, what was it, like almost 30%, 28%? 28% is what the polls say. You know, there's all sorts of questioning about just polling in general in the 2020 yeah. election, given COVID and all the rest. But the numbers that a lot of polling indicated were right around 28%, which even if that weren't the case, we do know in, in 2016, he only got 14%. So whatever it was, it, ha- it had to be a significant number above 14%. And so that's really significant and striking and important. That over those four years, given the presidency, given the Trump administration and the way he conducted himself as president, that this was a demographic that we know he grew his vote within, and whatever that actual number along is, with, along with every minority group, I might might that's add. Right. Um, that's right. That's right. So let's let's let's. So, and here's one thing I don't think you quite dealt with in the book, which is why, like, mm. certainly if you look at African Americans, it's not one. Yeah. Answer. If it were one in three, we'd have a Republican lock on the presidency if that were African-Americans. People regard gay people, especially in the current context of trans queer people, as obviously very left wing. Why would a third of these trans queer people are voting for Donald Trump, who's not just a Republican, but a really authoritarian Republican, someone Mm. that I have consistently opposed as a conservative, uh, as a gay conservative. Um, mm-hmm. Where does that come from? What, how do you explain that broad phenomenon of the remarkable conservatism of many gay men and women? Yeah, so I think here's where history is really helpful, right? Yeah. So the question actually shouldn't be why, or I'm going to change the question a little bit to say sure. that the aberration is not 28% voting for Trump in 2020, but actually the 14, only the 14% who did in 2016. That is, the, that is the number that sticks out from the historical norm. We have polling that goes back to the 1992 presidential election. That's when they started polling the gay vote. Actually, we have polls from the 1980s that were happening in state and local races, which I can speak about. But the first national vote is 1992. Actually, George H.W. Bush that year only gets 14%. And that is a historical low that was matched by Trump in 2016. But in all the other presidential elections but since then, LGBTQ voters give uh, the Republican presidential candidate between a quarter and a third of their vote. That is a consistent historical phenomenon. And so 2016 is the aberration, not 2020. Now, to you and me, that doesn't seem that shocking, it seems to be, but precisely because we've been out as gay men, we've been out in the gay world, we've met lots right. of gay men, and we can see that they're, they're a variety of, of and gay and, and lesbians too, that's not, and yet our groups, the people representing us, are all on the far left of the left at this point. So there is this, and most of the spokespeople for the current trans queer movement are also on the left or left. I just think, the other thing I think is that gay people are born randomly, right? So we are, mm. each generation, we don't concentrate like other minorities in particular geographic areas and then develop a generational identity. So yeah. every, we're, we're born anew every generation. And of course, half of us are going to be red state gay. So we're going to be born into conservative families. And, and, and so inevitably there is always this because of the randomness of homosexuality, and we don't quite understand why, it, but it does seem to exist everywhere, age generation maintains political diversity in some kind of way. Right. Yeah, and can I just add a little bit more data yeah. that I think like contextualizes that even more? I mean, I'm a historian here, so it's weird for me to be saying, let's bring more data into this, but I think this is useful to speak to that. So, you know, over the last decade or so, polling shows 15% of LGBTQ people are registered with the Republican Party among a population of about 9 million LGBTQ registered voters. So like 1.35 million are registered Republican. And I think that sort of small number speaks to what you were just talking about with the sort of lack of a public representation or a lack of even a public idea that gay and lesbian persons would belong to the Republican Party. But what we're talking about really a lot about this is how they vote. 
And when it comes to registration, only 50%, 50% are registered with the Democratic Party. So anywhere between 35 and some polls show as high as 43% are independents. 